Hey, it is Eric, and it is Judgmental. It's kind of a joke. Uh, And we are just back from Autobahn Country Club, just outside of Chicago in the beautiful city of Joliet. It was great. Good racers, good time. Not just a, a little boring in the penalty box. A lot boring. Now, Audubon is managed by our buddy, Mike Gritter, and his assistant, Kyle, and the whole staff at Audubon is actually the best. And of course, Joliet being a town that is often associated with Chicago, kind of its own city, kind of a great place, really good ambiance there. Now, we introduced hot pit fueling at Audubon, and some of the teams were having some challenges learning this. and I are both Euro trash drivers, and this was a great to see all the fine offerings from your more refined manufacturers. And of course, as a Volvo station wagon owner, I was happy to see a couple of Volvos that looked like they had also come out of the private school pickup line. Now, we don't put a whole lot of stock in stock cars, so to speak. That was really bad. Just cut that, John. We're not going to use that ever. Now, we don't usually think too much about NASCAR, but there were some really spectacular NASCAR and circle track inspired things at this race. Uh, chief among them was the Do It For Dale themed Badger Racing RX-7. Now, if you don't know Dale Earnhardt's history, he had the famous Wrangler paint scheme for years before the, uh, the Intimidator paint scheme. These guys did that, but with Badger instead of Wrangler. That was hella sweet. Now, we also had the Days of Blunder, the number 51 Buick. These guys bought the car from a firearms forum for sales section back in 2017 at the snowed out Road Atlanta Scrotium. Uh, Ran it like it had something burning in the oven when they were coming home from church, but they brought it back. One of several cars that was driven to the track and it looked hella sweet, but they couldn't even hit the pace car because it blew up. It was butt durable. One last circle track car here was the car number 422 S Cargo Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra S. Now these guys back in the day had raced circle track with a pair of matching Camaros. They were brothers. They had the cars painted identically. They decided that, you know, we should probably make our bitch and lemons car look the same. It was totally hella sweet. Of course, we love bad ideas, and few ideas are as bad as a DSM or really anything of that ilk, and Joliet did not disappoint. The Class C battle came down to the 219 Nightmare on Elm Street, Eagle Talon, and the 420 Wonder Consorto VW Quantum. That's really a battle for the ages, that pair. Indubitably. How dare you put the only desirable vehicle ever made by Eagle in Class C? Well, look, DSMs blow up. A lot. These guys hadn't ever done better than 50th, and they had the race of their lives, which means not only one mechanical failure for brake lights that failed, they did beat the Wonderment Consortium's Volkswagen Quantum Synchro. How dare you put a Volkswagen in classic? Well, you know how that does. It blew up. Now, as Mental mentioned, there were many DSMs at this race. DSM, of course, stands for Diamond Star Motors, which was that incredible partnership between Chrysler and Mitsubishi. And among those was the Eagle Talon, which was a Mitsubishi Eclipse. We also had this third gen Mitsubishi Eclipse, car number 404. Now the first DSM, kind of cool, kind of lightweight, kind of sporty. By the time they'd gotten to this age, they were kind of bloated and Chrysler Sebring-ish, weighing, you know, roughly as much as a cruise ship. These guys expected to run about 20 laps like they did at Pitt. This time it ran the whole race. That was pretty hella sweet. There was yet another Mitsubishi at this race, which was the Mitsubishi Lancer of Red Ace Racing. 
Uh, we've seen these guys before. They have a ramen theme usually. They came back with a band made theme. Now, what is band made? Band made is a metal band made out of Japanese women dressed up in maid outfits, and you know, I I googled this so you guys don't have to. What the f Both But Terrible and Hella Sweet was the B2 Racing's Rad Lobster, number 25 Dodge Stealth. <laughs> they had a lot going for them in this race. They bribed well, they brought a cake themed with the car to celebrate with. More on that in a bit. And they promptly drove horribly. Uh, the, the only non-boring team really of the weekend. Uh, they got penalties, they got sent to collect money for a charity raffle. They did great. Uh, then they had to count the sticky change for another bribe that we got. Now, what is sticky change? That's the under the carpet change you find every time you're building a race car that's covered in 40 year old soda. We're animal people. We love animals. I mean, obviously. So uh, obviously we love cars that are done up like animals. Hell Sweet, Toe Jam Racing, Project 86, Nemo Porsche 944. Raced all over the country. Looks great. Another Porsche done up like Sea Life, the Scheißmeister Racing Porsche 944. Now, they put Jay's picture on their bass for some reason. Bass, Porsche, it's it's a Porsche thing. It's fine. These guys are very Porsche. Hell Sweet, as always, Flying Pigs and that 750 Mustang. Always looks great. Runs clean, fast. Now, speaking of the flying pigs, uh, we did see them helping out the Mooshlong Jetta team. Now, what is Mooshlong? Well, that comes from a Lemon's Eye Racing broadcast where there was talk of the Molson Strait at Le Mans and talk of Molson Beer, and somehow it became Mooshlong at Mental's insistence. Nope. At Mental's inability to enunciate Moose. Schlong. Mooshlong! Now, this car is a Jetta TDI, which no doubt came from Lincoln Park in Chicago, as all Jettas seem to do. Uh, it got hit, they welded it back together uh, with the help of the pigs, put it back out, blew smoke everywhere, just like a Jetta kind of should. And speaking of smoking a little bit... The dipsticks also but terrible silver jetta they were going down the straightaway and they caught on fire and i don't mean like hell what like literally caught on fire driver got out of car ran to nearest flag station safely and calmly i might add the fire melted their wiring harness torched some fuel lines and also blew up the turbocharger in their 1.8 they went to the junkyard pulled another harness and then spliced the individual wires together they replaced the fuel line, which it was easy enough. The hard part was deturboing the 1.8. They blanked out the impeller and the oil lines, hoping that that would just bypass the turbo. Instead, it just blew oil right out of the tailpipe. They never did get back on track. Truly, but terrible weekend for them. Now, this being a race in my ancestral homeland, the Midwest. Maximum rust belt. Burka dang, gummit. The power of Dale compels you. Bam! Now, what that means is that we had all of the MN12 cars, which is fancy talk for all of the Ford Thunderbird relatives. That's the Ford Thunderbird Mercury Cougar and the Lincoln Mark 8. And if there is anything more Midwestern than having all three of those at a race, it's ham on potato rolls at a Lutheran funeral. Now, hella sweet. 168, the skid steer Mercury Bobcat, because Lemons always needs more Mercuries, and Team Skid Steers Bobcat is hella sweet. That's all well and good, Mercuries and Fords, but if you're going to own a sports car in the Midwest, I mean, it's got to be one of those big ones, you know, with the suspension that was kind of like a Conestoga wagon. Of course, we're talking about Camaros and Firebirds, and we had a whole bunch of those. The Mist Shift guys have a supercharger in their Camaro. On paper, it had everything going for it. Engine's a little bit lighter. Now, in reality, it was still a Camaro and the radiator hose split and dumped all of the water on the crank position sensor. And that absolutely fried it. And all of the electronics, they spent the entire weekend chasing that down. 
Big Bird number 24. Noobs in another V6 F body. Good bribes. Sesame Street theme, even though the Tickle Me Elmo needed a little bit of prompting. But I was conceived, raised, and educated in one of these, so I liked it. Today's episode brought to you by the letter CDC. Now, both but terrible and hell sweet. Bad Decisions Racing's Camaro. Uh, what they done did in this is put a 47 Plymouth flathead in it. Uh, you know, that's usually not a problem. For whatever reason, it decided to go nuclear at this one and overheated. And, you know, that nice cake we were talking about that the Rat Lobster guys had? The uh, nasty coolant water erupted in a geyser out of it and wrecked the hell out of that cake. That was butt terrible. As we come out of the pandemic, lots of new teams have been coming to Lemons, and that is hella sweet. Among them was the uh, number 97 Integra, which maybe, maybe is the rustiest car I've seen show up in Lemons in some time, which is saying something. Uh, and there happened to be two 2000 Integras at this race. They found each other and became fast friends. That's even better. We're super, super happy with that. Also, hello, sweet new team, the Subaru in-flight service number 121. This is a group of actual pilots overtasked with actually building the car. They had no theme. Luckily, their spouses stepped in and offered us a fine selection of airline snack and drink options. Welcome aboard. <laughs> now, but terrible this race was this car, not the people, but the car, and this was a new two lemons SW20 Toyota MR2. It blew up finished DFL, and uh, even the head gasket in a can didn't work. That was butt terrible. Sometimes we get cars that give us a little bit of pause, and this number 555 Honda was no exception. Jill from Lemons of Love even said that the driver's suit alone was worth five penalty points. It was way too pretty. All of them were just time attack drivers. They ran clean all weekend, had a great time. Look forward to seeing them come back. Moving on to the winners, uh, we will start with the Yokohama Road Mangler Cup. If you bring your car on a set of Yokohama tires and you race on them, you have the chance to win a set of Yokohama tires. And we had our first repeat winners, Wisconsin Crap Racing and their BMW. Now, as a postscript to this, if you are not going to run Yokohama tires, we kind of do have a preference for the kinds of tires you run. We're talking about Prime Wells, we're talking about Ling Longs, we're talking about Starfires, Roadstones, whatever kind of tire you can find that are about $35 each, hella sweet to bring that to Lemons. Now, speaking of bad tires, let's talk about the heroic fix. And that was the McCaskey family appreciations. And with a Ford Focus, now Saturday, this thing rolled by penalty. As a family team, they had just got it to run after wrenching on it since Thursday night. The owner conceded he had gotten about three hours of sleep and found out that it was about a 30 cent O-ring fuel line that had kept it all from running. The cage was creative needed some safety tweaks and a few odds and ends and we felt terrible sending him away but sunday morning bright and early he was back with every issue addressed and it very slowly went around the track and took the checker didn't finish last now normally we give out the i got screwed trophy and at this one we kind of tweaked that a little bit to the i refused to get screwed trophy and it went to mint motorsports kc and their plymouth duster now Plymouth Duster, where do we begin? Not only does it have one of the worst engines that we've ever seen in Lemons, which is the famous Mitsubishi 6G72, uh, the Duster seems to be built entirely out of weaknesses. Now, what had they done before they showed up? They put two sets of head gaskets in it, and it was still overheating, which means probably a cracked block, cracked heads, probably both, it's a Plymouth. They opted to limp the car around. So every 10 minutes or so, we would see them enter the pits, put a gallon of water in it and send it back out. The car ran the entire weekend, burned up a clutch, was stuck in fourth gear, melted the brakes, had the fan stuck on, and was getting a gallon of water every 10 minutes. They absolutely refused to get screwed. It was all super hella sweet. Our regional award is the Rob Blagorovich Award. Now, blah. Goyevich, Blagojevich. Team number 22, Napoleon Complex, may know how to bribe and bribe they did. A personalized video from the formerly incarcerated governor of Illinois. Hi, Eric Rude, this is Rob Blagojevich. You got a friend like Nicholas who's rooting for you and hoping that you can 
meet your responsibilities in a way that will bring credit to you and to your friends and to all of those who care about you. There was this wonderful platitude that Rod gave us. If you can't trust the process, it's not a competition and therefore it's not fun to watch it. And we thought that that applied so well to Team Shredded Cheats and their Ford Focus. And these guys were just great. They brought a car with a great, weird, obscure race car theme. They dressed in the outfits. They hung out and had a good time, even though their car was broken 90% of the weekend. They had a great attitude. We love seeing new teams like this. Congratulations. And we'll let Rod say it best. You've got to exercise fairness. You have to show discipline. You have to be just in how you uh, address the issues. Now, judge's choice was car number 613, just the tip. Here is a no-fail recipe for having a great time in limits. Step one, get some buddies, family, or both. Step two, get an interesting but reliable, not fast car. Leave the engine alone, even with 306,000 miles. Step three, read the rule book, including the how not to fail tech three times and then do what it says. Step four, make it look fun. Step five, clever name doesn't hurt. This was a great team. Best looking Tiburon ever in Lemons. Looking forward to seeing these guys again. Organizer's choice went to the Detroit student racing team. Now, what is the Detroit student racing team? That is our friend at the Detroit bus company, Andy Diderossi, and uh, his crew putting together a race car with high school students in Detroit and letting the high school kids race the car, which is super amazing. Now the car is a Lexus ES250, which is not a car that exactly screams, gonna whip everybody in the field, but the team was pretty enthused about it. This thing's gonna dominate. It may not have dominated, but team driver Bailey, in her racing debut, lost a wheel bearing, brought the car in under its own power without incident, all with the ice cold precision of a steely eyed fighter pilot. Their race was over, but they stayed and hung out in the paddock, even got some go-karting in. This is my new favorite team. Wheel to wheel auto racing is the pinnacle of high performance driving and the absolute limit of purpose built machines. And our IOE winner is literally none of those things. This Ford Fairlane meandered across the track like a sleeping house cat and the lean of a Hobie cat and a crosswind. It was amazing. Very well done, fireball racing. Here it is, lemons in a nutshell. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'd rather not race against the mini, you know, paper or in real life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This thing's gonna dominate! Mm -hmm. I demand mm -hmm. it for dang me! <laughs> dang it, Obby, you couldn't just keep the car on the track! I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Now I have to sit in the car. It's hot. I'm wearing a black quilt. You know that. I have failed. It says it's 212 in here. I tried to pull the pin on myself. <laughs> That was my intention. That hurt me! I'm sorry. You're out there with your shirt off and everything, all comfortable. Crap! What? Judges! No. Oh yeah. Crap! I bet the judges have lemons. Lemons? Lemons, electronic, motorsport, offender, data system. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day with the neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Yeah.